Hey, good morning and welcome back. A question to begin with, as usual, why do good men have to die? Our reading is from Jeremiah 52, verses 24 to 27. Here's what the scripture says. The captain of the guard took Sariah, the chief priest, Zephaniah, the second priest, and the three doorkeepers. He also took out of the city an officer who had charge of the men of war, seven of men of the king's close associates who were found in the city, the principal scribe of the army who mustered the people of the land, and sixty men of the people of the land who were found in the midst of the city. And Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took these and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblah. Then the king of Babylon struck them and put them to death at Riblah in the land of Hamath. Thus Judah was carried away captive from its own land. Why do so many good men and women have to die? Friends, good men have to die because humans tried the experiment of self-service, and the final result of self-service is death. God showed Adam and Eve the ways of life. God, our designer, knows the one and only way that sentient beings can live, and that is to be selfless, to go and find the laws of life and live things in the way that God shows us is, is really the only way that can be successful. And so we need to learn how to direct ourselves to the good of others while respecting the free choice, the free will of others. So people can never be forced to choose the good. They can only be encouraged. Otherwise, they're not free. God made us in his likeness, and, and he's free. Therefore, he could never force us or enslave us because that would be not like him. He's free. And for us to be made in his image and designed to live and function in his image, that means he gave us free choice. And he, he wants us to exercise that. If he took it back away, we would be unlike him. We wouldn't be in his image. And so he could never force or enslave us because then we wouldn't be like him and we are made in his image. That sounds kind of circular, doesn't it? But in other words, it is, it is actually a fact that biblically he says that we're made in his image. And so because of that, we know we can trust him. We can trust him completely. God is love. God is not force. God is not self-service. He is love, and he's a God of liberty. And I hope you understand how that all makes really powerful sense. It helps us. When we understand free will better, it helps us know we can actually trust him. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, help us to be free like you are. Help us to know your love for us and know that you don't use force upon us. And so we shouldn't use force on each other because it's part of the way of Jesus. Oh, Lord, help us to be right. Help us to respect each other. Help us to be godlike in the, in the right sense, Lord, not in the wrong sense, but to be like you in terms of not forcing others because we're made in your likeness. Thank you for hearing our prayer and giving us these remarkable unspeakable gift, the, the divine trait you give us of liberty. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So good men have to die because Satan tried the experiment of self-service and then he led men and women to also do that terrible experiment of self-service. But God calls us back from that awful, lonely place of, you know, me first approach to life. And what a privilege it is to learn how to help and serve others. Today, help and serve others, maybe. God be with you.